Well, hello, Monica. It's so good to talk with you and see your face again. Um, hey, Rachel. How's it going? Good, good. Yes, I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. I do appreciate that, by the yes. way. Yes. Oh, I'm super psyched to have you here. We, uh, we originally, for those of you listening, we originally met last October at a um, conference that we both attended and we actually roomed together <laughs> in yes. the B&B, right? <laughs> didn't yeah, know. and we didn't know each other. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it was cool to get to know each other and one of our other friends who was with us that we met too. Mm -hmm. It ended up being a really great group, I think. Well, yeah, I think it was amazing and we like had a lot to share and as all, like all in business for ourselves, it was kind of nice to hear the, the successes and the struggles. So it was, it was amazing. So it was. yeah, so tell my audience a little bit about what you do what is savage babe who is monica whatever you feel like sharing <laughs> so yes so i'm monica and i claim on my podcast that my middle name self-love but it really isn't i just like self-love um and my business is really centered around that concept as well so it's called savage babe and it is a woman empowerment brand and it's actually a clothing line so athleisure wear, e-commerce. I'm not trying to build any like stores or retail stores around, you know, I'm, it's strictly through online. So, um, and what I, what I can share about Savage Babe is that it's almost like a personal journey of mine. So I built it a lot, a lot off of what has happened to me in my past growing up and a lot of what my journey right now is and so you can kind of see the transition of the brand and the message as I grow as a person too which is kind of cool That's fun. but yeah 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 so yeah um, I don't think I told you where I'm from but my name is Monica Ghana and I am originally from the Seattle area but I am now residing in Boise, Idaho. Mm -hmm. And if you've never been there, it's a super beautiful place. And I know it's not mainstream. And I think that's what I love about it. It's like that, that place that not a lot of people know about, but as more people start to know about it, like they just want to move here in like two seconds. <laughs> wow. So yeah. yeah. Have you been, have you been to Boise? I haven't. And I remember talking to you about it when we were in, um, California and that you said you're like it's like one of the best kept secrets it is and you it just is. posted like this most amazing photo I think you were kayaking or something oh no yes I did but that was an invoice <laughs> that wasn't in Boise. well that was beautiful anyway but no some I know um a couple other people that live not in Boise but in Idaho and they're like it's actually surprisingly it's not a place you would think of going right it's beautiful so yeah I, I'll come visit you Heck yes, come visit. I'll show you around. We can go um, floating the river. That's a popular one here and hiking. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, yes, yes. Uh, but yeah, so that's where I'm at right now. Been here since 2015. I originally came here to get my master's degree in mathematics. And um, I went and got my undergrad. It, I did that at northern idaho and it's a university called um university of idaho in moscow so mm -hmm. for those who don't know that's like close to coeur d'alene sandpoint area but um super small town and I, yeah i got my i got my bachelor's of science degree there and then qu quickly after i graduated moved up to boise to go to BSU to finish my master's degree. Mm -hmm. So I ended up doing that, getting a job right, right away after I graduated with my master's and I became a analyst intern for a company um, just for like the purposes of, you know, being confidential. I probably won't name the company, but it was a really great company. Like. I had really awesome coworkers. 
Everybody was super friendly. Um, I got to work by the time that like I ne neared the end of my career with them. I was actually able to work remotely three times a week. So I got to be home and work and I was making pretty great paychecks and you know, the, the benefits were, they were amazing. So, you know, can't complain, great company culture, but you know, some people would agree that like the corporate life just isn't for you, right? <laughs> this hey, is you're, like, talking, you're talking to one right now. I love it. <laughs> your income as a pharmacist so I I'm loving this right now like yeah so. right yeah so so yeah Rachel you you totally get it and I'm sure a lot of people who may still be in the corporate life thinking you know Ugh, it's just not for me or you want to leave and you feel like you can't leave well I can I can honestly tell you that you can like nobody's holding a gun to your head saying you can't and while we do have a lot of excuses like we have bills and we or we have kids and we have to you know make a make paychecks so we can pay for all these things we need to pay for it. i mean there's always other options like you don't have to be stuck doing what you're doing if you hate it amen <laughs> but, <Defense, laughs> <sister. laughs> but side point i left the job because yeah, I, I just couldn't be there anymore. And I knew from day one, like even before the first day that I started, I knew that it wasn't for me. And so I kind of was playing the whole suck it up, you know, game, the suck it up and just do what you need to do because my parents, you know, were basically telling me like, you got a great job and you got a great paying job and you know, you can afford all these things you want don't be stupid and leave your job. And yeah. I, you know, I believe that for a, for the longest time, I believe that I had to stay in a shitty job that I didn't like. I mean, it wasn't shitty, but a job that made me feel kind of shitty. It just because, wasn't, yeah, it wasn't living up to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, and I did have a manager that did micromanage me so much and I'm not, micromanaging me is probably not the best idea because <laughs> oh <laughs> I just, yeah <laughs> oh, I so you. and I love that you I love talking to you about this because of what I did but I also love just empowering people who are listening to your message that it's never going to be the right time it's never going to feel like all right this is the time for me to really take that plunge like how did you know that it was the right time. What happened? Oh, when <laughs> you can barely give it your all at this job, like, you know, and it was really hard to give it my all. And it was really hard to come to work and act like I cared. And it was, it was almost like so painful to the point that something in the back or something in my gut was telling me like, you need to go like i just can't i can't wake up to this anymore and you'll know it's it's excruciating and it's it's painful mm -hmm. <laughs> but not in a physical way but you know you'll you'll feel it in your gut that it's just you can't do it anymore it's like a bad relationship with a guy who's like cheated on you multiple times or mm -hmm. is physically abusing you and you know you need to leave but you don't that kind of feeling um that gut feeling that tells you yes so I f and and also the fact that like I had my master's degree in math and um a lot of the higher ups were were men and they were treating me like my ideas were not great they were basically any ideas that I had um were being put down and i remember once that my manager i made i made a tool that could help us analyze a certain statistic and i remember being super excited about it and showing my manager because it was a tool that i felt we needed because it was a question that was being often asked and he's just like stop wasting your time making stuff you're not getting paid to do that I just need you to basically do the work that 
the monkey work, you know, like the checking the numbers because I was an analyst. So, um, and I was like, you know, I couldn't really say anything, but it was, it was things like that that kept happening, like moments like that, that kept making me feel like, you know, I, I don't even, this isn't like my purpose and I know it's not, and I, I don't need to be taking this from anybody either. So it just wasn't a great match to be there because A, I knew I was meant for bigger things and B, I didn't have time having people tell me that my ideas weren't good enough. Um, yeah, and that in and of itself, like, as far as like your health, your mental health with that, like, right. I think people discount, like you spend a lot of time at work and you do. It weighs so heavy on just your overall well-being. So I think this is so powerful. Yes, yes. To have like if you're getting anxiety too from like every, cause I don't know who knows what Slack is, but um, Slack's oh like God. a workplace messaging thing app. Okay. Um, so, you know, instead of using like Facebook Messenger, you use Slack and everybody in the office has it so you can connect with somebody if you have questions about something. Got it. Uh, but every time my manager slacked me, like I got so much anxiety because I felt like it was like he would, because most of the time it was either I did something wrong or he needed something done quickly. And it gave me so much anxiety, like every day having to feel that. Mm -hmm. And just, it was like a frog in my throat and I couldn't like, get myself to just relax about it so that was another thing anyways besides the point I want I don't want to get too off topic but it was time to go so I left and I put my two weeks notice in and that felt like a weight off my shoulders I never felt so good it was amazing um, <laughs> yeah and, it, and that's like anything in life whether it's something it's like once you tackle that big thing that's like in front of you like mm -hmm. When I was a manager, when I was a pharmacy manager, we had to re read the book, Eat the Frog, I think it's called. And it's just like, get that big thing out of the way. So then the rest of your life can start to fall into place. Yes. So I commend you because like, I know it, it's hard, girl. It's like so hard, but I hope for the people listening, like realize what it is actually doing to you from the inside out, like your health, the stress, like stress does so many crazy things to us. Oh, yes. You're going to love know, right? Right. Yeah, no, I love that you mentioned that because um, just to give some perspective on like what the stress from my own job did to me was uh, I was very just mm. not like I would I would bring that home. I yeah. would bring the stress home and I would lash out at my boyfriend I would just be like this big ball of grumpiness mm -hmm. um I wasn't happy I complained all the time about every little thing um and I was a victim like woe is me you know like why is this happening to me why why can't I just be happy why does all this mm -hmm. bad shit keep happening to me like I always just the like my mentality of while I was being like in a job that I did not like and that wasn't good for my mental health just made yeah. me more of a negative person yes. to be around. Yeah. yeah. And who wants to live like that? No, I don't think anyone truly does, but I think like you touched on before, it's just being able to realize that you deserve more and exactly made for more. I think you said that and and that exactly. is that's huge. So uh, give us an idea. So once you, did you start your business while you were still working this job? Did you, how'd you go about kind of transitioning from that corporate -y job to what you're doing now? Right. Yeah. Great question. So I had started the brand like probably five months before I quit. So I was, it was a side hustle for a while. Um, and then as soon as I had quit, I, you know, I, like Rachel was saying, like, I didn't have 
much security. I know most people who quit usually plan around that and have like a backup, but I did not. <laughs> like, I didn't either, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I and just a leap. <laughs> you do. You do. Some, some, yeah, some of us are just crazy, <laughs> crazy risk takers, aren't we? Yeah. But, so um, so I've been long. <laughs> right. I know. That's exactly why. Um, but, you know, I just had bought a house six months before quitting. So, of course, I had put money, a lot of money down on that. Um, so not much in my savings. And when I did start my brand, every single paycheck was going into my launches, all my clothing, all the overhead that I needed to get the business started. So I was spending quite a lot right before I quit to the point that I couldn't really save any of it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being with my amazing boyfriend who what originally wasn't in the business with me um but now he is a co-owner and he's our media director he about march it was like three months after i started the business he he started you know him and i started talking about me potentially quitting and i told him i can't quit because i have to fund this business and i have bills you know those excuses oh, yeah. um um but you know we talked and decided, you know, I could find a part-time job and then he could also be co-owner. So he would help invest in the business as well. So that's what I did. You know, as soon as I quit, I found a part-time job um, that I also didn't like. But, you know, I it, it was a start. It was a ba it's baby steps. Yeah. And then he of course became co-owner started helping me fund launches and stuff like that and i was st still able to pay for my own bills and all that through my my part time and also i was like doing things like donating plasma and i was also yeah i did things like that um i liquid liquid uh liquidated a lot of my stuff so you know i sold it for money stuff that I wasn't using anymore because mm -hmm. let's all be real we all have stuff that we don't use that's just sitting around and we can actually sell it on Facebook which is a great place now the marketplace mm -hmm. you can sell stuff on there um, so I did that as well to make some extra cash and that kind of helped a little bit as I got my coaching clients so mm -hmm. then when I had enough coaching clients where I didn't need to be donating plasma or working that part time anymore, then I quit. I quit that part time. So I wasn't there for too long, probably like a month and a half to two months. It was so brief that I can barely remember. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I just think the powerful thing in this and I, is that you won, you took the leap without having like everything ducks in a row you just are like you know what i've got to do this you had a, somebody to support you so you had your tribe let's say yeah. and yeah, you did for them yeah the support is huge in any venture that you take you know whether it's a business or you know a move you decide to move cross country or a health journey or whatever but the fact that you're like you did whatever it took to keep it going it was your baby you did whatever. it was <laughs> It is my baby. <laughs> it feels like a baby. Yeah. And I'm sure you feel the same way about yours too. But yeah. yeah. Um, and, and you know, the thing is like in its faith, I'm not religious, but I do believe in like having faith that things will work out as long as you're aligning with yourself and what you feel is right. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, my boyfriend and I could have broken up who knows like you don't know and we're not married so it's like for me to like put my faith into that everything would work out yeah um is that's just like one of the things you have to do is just be uncomfortable and I think that's the hard part for most people is just not they everybody wants to feel secure because then they don't have to worry but uh but in life, you're always going to have worry about something, even if you're in a nine to five, there's always going to be something stressing you out. So like, 
why not just stress out about the right stuff or worry about the right stuff like yes creating this life that you love yeah um mm -hmm. so anyways that's what happened and so over the months that since then I you know now have coaching I am coaching some clients and where also our brand has picked up quite a lot and I think it's just um being because I I quit my job now I'm able to fully invest myself into it and then along the way I found a few people that have been super supportive so like my boyfriend who works really really hard too in the media area of things like getting us amazing quality photos and videos and um, finding models to help you know with the photo shoots for launches and then we re recently um well not recently she's been like a uh, old personal assistant from last year but then took off for a little bit but then sh we brought her back on and so she she's always been a believer in the brand like even before she started getting paid to work for us she was just volunteering hours a week to just help savage big girl so i knew she was like always an amazing person that believed in what we were doing so it's just finding people who really believe in you and who are willing to support you so that has helped so much too and just like the growth like i honestly couldn't be doing any of this and we wouldn't be growing as quickly as we would if i didn't have people like that yeah. you know and i feel like everybody here's one thing that i want to stress that i always used to be guilty of it was just i was always like i'm independent i'm the only one i need i can do it all myself i don't need anybody mm -hmm. and that was something that i always believed in and i was super prideful of it because i don't i was just I grew up that way thinking that I don't know how because my parents didn't really teach me that it was just something that I I don't know picked up somewhere but I, I realized in the last like year and a half that um, you actually you can get somewhere so much more quickly if you allow people to help you mm -hmm. and I want people to know that I want people to know that it's okay to have help and to ask for help um, and and to not feel bad about it either because that's another thing I feel like we don't want to ask for help because we feel bad yeah I think I know I'm the same way it's so funny listening to you because it's like listening to myself but I ha I'm still bad about it like but I think sometimes we just especially as women I think we have this like innate feeling that we need to just do it all um, mm -hmm. And like you said, you can't grow, you can't succeed without, and I'm always talking about tribe and, you know, you need to have those people around you to support you, to push you forward. And you need smarter people than yourself. You need to be around smarter people because they're always challenging you to grow. And I, I think sometimes, I, I know sometimes that I, I see people that are just stuck with the same friends, the same people all the time. Like, how are you going to grow if you're not challenging yourself with new people? So, right. I think you said that beautifully. Oh, thank um, you. You too. Yeah. No, I love that. It's true. You want to have people that more essentially know more than you. Um, I think that's one of the greatest values that the people that help me, like my boyfriend or my assistant or my podcast editor, they're all, they all offer me different points of views or know a lot more about certain things that I don't know. So then when they tell me about it or teach me about it, it really helps open my eyes to how things could improve. And yeah. I think that's so important. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so if you ever are growing a business, anyone who's listening, always hire people who are smarter than you. <laughs> yeah. you're the smartest one in the room, you're in the wrong room. <laughs> That's yeah. Times. Exactly. So one of the great things, and we were chatting before we hit record and we're having some good conversation, but you, so you used to focus a lot on your fitness business and you've transitioned away from that, right? You said? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm interested because I know, you know, myself and like 
my health and wellness and fitness friends out there, it can become very draining to just continue to like do those one-on-one -on -one coaching or small group coaching. So talk about kind of what you have kind of ventured into and, and your, what you're experiencing with that. Yes. Yeah. So I believe that growing a coaching business isn't for everybody and it definitely wasn't for me and I didn't realize that until trying it. Sometimes you don't know until you try and I think that's one of the best learning experiences and a really great way to just open your eyes um, because I feel maybe we can get trapped in the thinking because everybody else is growing a coaching business, especially how popular it's become on, you know, Instagram these days. You see all these health and wellness coaches um, that maybe that's what we need to do to have a happy life, to make money, to be able to work remotely online. But that's not true. You don't have to be a coach to have the life that you want. You can do other things, um, you know, like maybe you're you're really into, I don't know, uh, creating things like posters made out of wood or like um, arts and crafts stuff like Etsy stuff. Maybe you're really into that. You can totally create an online business by doing that kind of stuff that you love um, or brand and web design. So maybe you're really into that kind of stuff as well. So yeah, you don't have to be a coach. And I think I got a little bit mixed in the mud with feeling like I needed to because I was I was associating with so many coaches mm -hmm. and really like absorbing into that at the time that I felt that was the only way I could make big money. But um, after doing it for, I think, almost a year, I realized that growing a coaching business isn't really what, what I want. I actually really just enjoy coaching a few people that I know who are going to commit and who are ready but I don't want like a billion clients I just want maybe like up to five at most like I, I'd rather have just the few that I can focus on mm -hmm. um and then also realizing that my talents like they're I do love helping people, but I think my greatest talents are those talents that we all did when we were kids. Mm -hmm. So just think of back to when you were a kid. What did you really love to do? What were you passionate about? So some of the things that I can think back to my childhood was um, music, drawing, just like creating. Like I would create different songs. I would also create poems and I would create lots of drawings and paintings um, mostly visual creation was a huge one for me and then animals so those were the things that like I knew I really loved and something that came natural to me was just creating and then also loving animals so I realized my business was a the apparel brand Savage Babe was a really great business to get that creativity out so it's nice because I get to create the apparel and I get to create the designs which really does just light up my soul like it's the thing that makes me feel good is like creating for others things that they would enjoy um, and then I, I brought up the animal thing because then now I also realize, you know, hey, my business can help give back to nonprofits that help animals. And so we recently um, decided to, you know, help. I don't know if you know what Best Friends Animal Society is, but it's a nonprofit organization that helps in no-kill shelters. And that's been one of my biggest dreams is to get rid of no-kill shelters. But it's like, I, I can't be doing a billion things, but what if I use my business's money to help fund someone who's building that type of movement? Um, so now that's what we're doing as well. So 
you know, just finding out what you really love to do and what you're really good at, what your talents are, what your passions are. And you can honestly create a business according to all those things that you want, you know, you don't have to do what everybody else is doing. You just, I love that. Cause I know from us talking, um, there were, we're both dog lovers. We both have rescue dogs. So yeah. I'm so in line with that. I think that's amazing. And I've always wanted to associate with a non-for-profit and it probably would be something to do with dogs and all of that. So, but I love what you yeah. said last about just finding what you love and just going for it like you you made reference to when you were thinking about quitting your corporate job earlier about like what your parents said to you and it's what maybe other people might have said to you along the way like you shouldn't do that that's not the right way and i think a lot of times it's very easy to listen to those people that say tell you no don't do it but i also think it's important to remember that the reason they're probably telling you not to do it is because they are wishing that they had done it and there's could be too yes <laughs> could be I, yeah. someone said that to me once like um and i and i follow i don't know if rachel hollis but i follow a lot of her stuff and she talks about nobody that's doing more than you will ever belittle what your dream is something i'm paraphrasing yeah that, yeah yeah no i've heard that quote it's so but, true though. yeah so i commend you and we're both you know and for everyone listening, like if there's something inside of you, it's meant for you and it's there for a reason. And I'm giving you permission. We're both giving you permission to stop. <laughs> right. Stop pressing it. Stop ignoring that and get, you know, do something that really lights your, lights you on fire. Like exactly. Get your booty on fire. Get you fired up. Makes you excited to wake up in the morning. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I couldn't have said it better myself. I don't know how to explain to people, who, um, especially I know a lot of, you know, people who are still stuck in that mindset of that. You can't, you can't, you know, just up and quit your job and try to build the life you want or have an online business and make a living out of that. Like, if you're in that mindset and I just stop, just stop. Don't because it's, it's not true. And I honestly don't feel like I would have ever realized what possibilities I, my life could have had. And especially now, you know, I, sometimes I forget that I'm living exactly the life that I had always dreamt of living. Like I remember writing in my journal back when I was still in a corporate job, like I would write in there, I want to work remotely from online. I want to make a living. I want to just be able to wake up in the morning um, whenever I want. Uh, I want to take breaks whenever I want and, and just be home and work. And like for the longest time that was like, I knew that's what I wanted. And now that I have it, it's, it's just, amazing it's like a freaking it's a dream yeah. but i will admit that you know sometimes i forget that i am living my dream um and there will be moments where i get super stressed out especially right before a launch i'll get super stressed out um and then i will stop and remind myself like look you're doing what you exactly what you've been wanting to do and you you need to be grateful for that. So just always, you know, remembering that maybe you're not exactly where you want to be, but realizing that you have made a lot of progress in, you know, the last several months or years or how long it's, how long it's been for you. Um, so that's another thing is just always enjoying the process because I know it's easy to get caught up in stuff and stress and worries even after you quit your job uh but we just just remember like this is what you've always wanted mm. yeah i'm like that's super powerful i'm like taking it in myself because it is it's in any situation you're it's just you have to be grateful for everything that you have and where you're at you're where you're supposed to be you're becoming the person that you need to become to get to that next level. So I took that in because I, it is, it's very easy, especially when you're 
a solopreneur of, you know, that you're doing it on your own, not necessarily all on your own, but the bulk of it, you're taking it on. Yeah. So there's days where you just, there's, you want to quit. Then there's days that you are like, this is the most amazing thing. I'm so glad I'm doing it. I'm changing lives. I'm, you know, right. smile on someone's face. So <laughs> I, I hear you girl. And the end of the day, I think we both would say it is definitely worth, you know, living your best life and taking the road less traveled and not following what everybody else is doing. So yeah, so much better. Yeah. So much better to just be you. And plus it's so much easier to just be you. <laughs> yeah. When you're finally yourself and you're finally aligned with what you're doing, it's just like you can be your, your real self, your authentic, real, and you know, living, living in integrity. Cause Somebody told me, like, you just have to remember all the people that you're, you need, that need you, whatever it is you're offering. And when you're not being your best version of you, you're, you're just, you're letting those people down. However, yeah. You know, if it's bigger than you, I mean, either of us. So I think that's something that always resonates with me is I'm thinking about the person that I potentially could be helping, but when I dim my light because somebody else doesn't want you know, heck yes <laughs> shining no. too bright yeah you said that spot on i'm i really resonate with that too because that's something i always try to remember is like if i am being afraid and not willing to be myself for my community or for the people that look up to me then i'm doing a disservice because like what they need is realness. What they need is, you know, people who have been through the shit and made it through and they need, they need to know that it's possible. So if we're not like being ourselves and, or I'm not, you know, by sharing those kinds of things because I'm just too scared or worried what other people will think, I'm not really helping anybody. Amen. So girl, where can people like, find you find your clothing line your amazing clothing line anything monica Heck, yes yeah so um I, the, we have a website and it's savagebabecollection.com so you'll, there you will be able to find all our apparel and then all our programs so we have the ambassador program right now um depending when this podcast episode is out so what's the date today it's, oh the it's june 4th right now mm -hmm. so um about three days ago we released ambassador applications and that'll be going on for round one until june 15th so we also have an affiliates program. So if you're not ready to commit to the ambassador thing, um, we always have an affiliates program, which is way more uh, less of a commitment and you get to make money while you know, rep for us and stuff like that. Um, and then we also it, like, I don't know if you know, you have any Boise people, but or you know, we travel too. So if you'd like to model, potentially model for our clothing, we also, you know, have model applications on our website as well for anyone who's interested in becoming a model for one of our shoots. So that's cool too. Like we're very, very community based. So we really like to involve people, which is why we have all these um, different options to get involved. And then as far as the nonprofits, we're not only donating to the animal shelter um, organization, but we are also donating to a foundation called the Movement Foundation. I don't know if you've heard of them, oh, but it's, that? yeah, so it's, um, you'll, you can find that on our website as well, but just to give you a rundown. It is to help empower young women and just women in general also kids, little girls, uh, more of, you know, body, body positivity, like that approach, like not using exercise as a punishment or as a means to like try to fit into society, but use it to 
be healthier, take care of our bodies, love ourselves. So they're really about like self-love, body positivity, teaching about health and, and movement as a means to just take care of ourselves. It's an amazing nonprofit. So we're also donating to them as well. Um, but yeah, so you can find all this information on the website, but we really do hang out a lot on Instagram and our Instagram handle is Savage Babe Collection. So it's just like our website and then yeah, DM us, you know, we're actually always responding to DMs on there. Um, we post every day in the stories like motivational quotes and stuff about the upcoming launches or programs or shout outs to like women in our community um so you know if you need some motivation for the day definitely tune in and then we have a facebook um it's just savage babe collection so you can find it on there as well and then we used to have a twitter but you know I just, I just couldn't keep up with that. <laughs> Hard. I can't, yeah, I can't remember the last time I tweeted. I have a Twitter, but I don't tweet. So yeah, <laughs> I know it's just sitting there, but yeah. Oh well, yeah. And then the podcast, which Rachel was yeah. on. Yeah. She was oh, on yeah. our Savage Babe podcast. So if you'd like to hear Rachel speak on mine, definitely tune in. I do not remember though, which episode, cause it was like a while back. I'm going to look, I know it was like one of your first, I think it was a single digit. I think it was. A, like seven or something. It was early. It was early on, but I'll yeah. really share that along too when I when I do this. But yeah, I, oh my, I'm just like listening to, you know, all of what you do. I, it's, I'm inspired. Like I might apply for something on your. Hell website. yeah, girl. <laughs> yes, I'd love to so, have you part of it. Yeah, I love what you're doing, and I love sharing women that inspire me and women and women that have similar. You have a similar story to me. Like you took a chance. And now, I know. look, look at, at us now. I know. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I'm so thankful for your time. Of and course. To go check out Savage Babe Collection and what Monica is doing. I just, I think it's amazing. And that's so why I just needed you on this on my podcast because part of being healthy is that mental aspect and that emotional aspect. And I think just talking about women people in general, but women especially, that are actually going for it. And I think that it's so cri critical. We give yes. so much to everyone else that we sometimes forget ourselves, especially the moms out there. Right. So, Society, uh, yeah, has brainwashed into thinking that we're not allowed to take care of ourselves. And that's bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> Get out there. It's and so not true. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, exactly. You need to you need to put yourself first so that you can be the best you can be for everyone around you. Amen to that. So thank you so much. And uh go check out all of her amazing stuff that she's doing and get out there and do something for yourself and be amazing because that is why we're on this planet is to live our best lives. So hell yeah. Thanks so much, Rachel. Uh, and thank you for having me as always. Yes. You are so sweet and I'm just so grateful for your friendship and always. watching you grow and starting this podcast. Like I, I'm super excited for all the awesome stuff you've been up to. Well, thank you. And we will stay in touch and I'm sure you'll be on another episode. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We'll need to do more episodes together. Absolutely. On both. Absolutely okay. girl. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Talk to yes. you later. Take care. Bye. Bye.